Hey guys, welcome to Lingua Marina channel. The topic for today's video is uh, two versus four. When do we use two? When do we use four? Um, so before we start, pause this video and let me know what's going on in your country and it's a great way for you to practice your English. Now let's talk about two versus four. The first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna talk about when we use two. The first case when we use two is when we're talking about a destination. I am going to Germany, to Germany, at the end of April. I'm going to Munich, by the way. Or there is another example. We are going to a restaurant tonight. To a restaurant, because this is a direction. I'm not gonna back out of that. I wanna go to Spain. Second case, if we're talking about time and if we're talking in British English, what they love to say it's a quarter to two, which means 1.45. Like Americans, well, I've never heard Americans saying quarter to two or 20 to two. And uh, when I first heard it in Great Britain, I was a little confused, but they say that a lot. It's quarter to two. Americans would say it's 1.45 because quarter is uh, 15 minutes. And there is a second case of using two with time. For example, the restaurant is open from Monday to Friday. So we can kind of replace two with until, and this is another way to use it. So for example, the, the restaurant is open until 5 p.m. or the restaurant is open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And this is when we use two. But I do Monday, Wednesday, Friday from seven to nine. When we compare something, I prefer traveling to sitting at home. I prefer sleeping to working. I prefer watching Marina's videos uh, to uh, studying by myself. I prefer metaphysics to theology. The next type of use is when we're talking about a receiver of an action. I gave my book to my follower. I sent a letter to my friend. I wrote an email to my colleague. Give it to me, give it to me! And the last but not the least, when you want to express a reason for your action. For example, I came here to see you. I did it to make more money. I've started learning English to get a job promotion. So we're explaining why we've started doing something and this is when we use to. I came to see you. Now let's move on to talking about four. You see what I've just used? Let's move on to talking because what it is, this is our direction. We're moving to the next section of our class. We're talking about four now. When we talk about benefits, we use for. So for example, you're doing something for your health or for the benefit of your parent. Um, I bought a gift for my friend. I stopped eating gluten for the benefit of my health. Why are you gonna get for my health? For also indicates periods of times. I've been living in the US for four years. Uh, I've been learning English for several months now. I've been watching Lingua Marina channel for over two years and I love her content. She's amazing. She's the best influencer out there. Oh, you are being modest. <laughs> also, when we talk about schedule, we use for. I made an appointment with my doctor for March 13th. March 13th is my birthday. I'd rather reschedule it for March 14th. Your flight is scheduled for May 31st. Again, we're talking about schedule. A hearing is scheduled for today. We also use for to express a reason. He was fired from job for being constantly late. He has been late so many times and he's been fired for that. Or she's been promoted for her good English, because her English reached a certain level and she qualified for a promotion. And we also use for to express a purpose of something. Marina creates videos for improving your English. You watch my videos for improving your language. Travel a lot for work. So. By the way, if we ask native speakers, uh, like I always like to ask them about different grammatical rules, I would ask them like, do you know when to use for and to? And they will be like, eh? Huh? Because they just use them naturally. They don't sit down and be like, oh my God, where do you use to, where do you use for? They just feel the language. And the best way to live a language, to understand it better, is to listen to audiobooks or read books in English. And I'm super proud to talk about Blinkist in this video. They're sponsoring this video. And they're also an amazing app that I'm subscribed to. So Blinkist takes 
a huge book and it takes the best insights out of this book and create like a 15 minute paragraph that you can read or listen to. And um, I know there are so many books out there that you want to read, but with Blinkist, you can just go through them all with this 15 minute abstract and get the most important information that you need and practice your English. Blinkist has a lot of books, but the one book that I would highly, highly recommend uh, you to read is The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F-U-C-K. I'm not gonna say this word out loud, but this book helps you change uh, your way of thinking. It helps you relax and focus on things that really matter, like your English. And as always, because you're watching this channel, you are privileged. And the first 100 people who click a link below are gonna get a free one-week trial of Blinkist. That means that you can uh, get the most important things from the book that I've just recommended for free. And if you decide to continue and get their membership, you're also going to get 25% off. So in order to practice more, in order to integrate English into your life, start reading and listening to audiobooks in English. The link is below, one week completely free. So don't hesitate to start right now because only 100 people will get a free trial. There are also cases when two and four can be both used. Well, let's talk about some examples so I can illustrate this better. Let's compare two examples. He's studying English for work. He is studying English to be able to talk to his American friends. So what we've noticed here is that we use for with a noun. He learns English for fun. He learns English for work. He learns English for his master's degree. But when we have a verb, we say to. He learns English to talk to his friends in the US. He learns English to get a job promotion. He learns English to study abroad. See the difference? Now let's move on to another example when both two and four can be used. My friend brought lunch to me. My friend brought lunch for me. Now both are correct, but they have slightly different meanings. My friend brought lunch to me, we're talking about direction. He brought lunch to my apartment, put it on my table, and I started eating. But when we say my friend bought lunch for me, we really want to emphasize that he's doing something nice for me. Uh, he thought about me when he was getting lunch, so he got one for me. Apologize can be used with both to and for because you apologize for something, for something that you've done. I apologize for breaking your cup. I apologize for this video being too short, but you apologize to someone. I apologize to you for this video being too short. I apologize to my friend uh, for forgetting about her birthday. I apologize for the language. Apologize to you. Travel to and travel for. I traveled to Russia, I traveled to Paris, I traveled to Germany, but I travel for work, I travel to Russia for Lingua Fest, which is a festival by my company, I travel to Germany for meetings. You see, uh, so for uh, is for the reason, to is for the destination. Yes, you must travel to France immediately and put that directly into the hands of the king and him alone. Men can travel for work. Families unite. Wait for or wait to. Wait for someone or something. I am waiting for the concert tonight. I am waiting for my dad to come and visit us in California. But you wait to do something. I cannot wait to see my family in Russia. Or I cannot wait to travel this summer. I cannot wait to show you this. When we use ask, we normally use for. Ask for something. Can I ask you for a cup of tea, please? Uh, can I ask you for a favor? Don't ask for permission, ask for forgiveness. When we talk about belonging, we normally say to. It belongs to me, it belongs to you, and never belong for, so don't say that. She belongs to me. When we say care, we care for somebody. I care for my dog, I care for Alex, I care for my family. You care for him. And the last but not the least, when we're saying prepare, we always say prepare for something. I will need to prepare for the festival. Prepare for battle. That was it for me, guys. If this was useful, if this was fun, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. And I'm looking forward to reading your comments about uh, this video, whether it was useful or not. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next videos. Bye.